Canada had a problem in the 70s that is very much like what China has today. Uh, the government was creating money uh, to finance its own national spending, but the problem was provincial spending. The government was not going to create money uh, and turn it over to the provinces to spending. So what were they going to do? What does Europe mean? Europe is as uh, abstract a concept as GDP is. Most of us, when we say Europe, we think of the European people. But uh, when it comes to policy, what you're talking about, Europe means uh, the political leaders at the top. Ever since 1945, the United States has uh, meddled and interfered in the election of other countries. Uh, if you want to find out US policy in Europe, uh, look at something called Operation Gladio, G-L-A-D-I-O. It's about how the United States spent a lot of money in Italy and other countries to make sure that they would promote politicians who were in favor of the United States. They would set up non-government organizations that would uh, hire and employ these politicians. They would give them huge grants if they were pro-American. They would also stage many assassinations or terrorist attacks and blowing up train stations that uh, they would say the communists did it, but it was really the CIA that did it. There are many books about how the United States has done this. I've been told by uh, American uh, former uh, finance uh, uh, officials, uh, in treasury uh, officials, that the United States will simply go and uh, bribe foreign politicians to say, uh, we'll, we'll uh, promote your career. We'll make you very rich. We'll, we'll send your children to college uh, in the United States. Uh, we'll give you a lot of money uh, for real estate and for you to put offshore, uh, but you have to support uh, America's position. Uh, America's done this, especially in the left-wing parties, in the socialist uh, uh, parties, in the labor parties, the social democratic parties. So when uh, you say, what is Europe's policy? This is the policy of NATO. This is the policy of politicians that the United States have been grooming to represent American interests, not European interests. European doesn't have a European politics except for the nationalist politics that want that say, wait a minute, uh, we, we want to withdraw from NATO. What do we need NATO for? Nobody's going to in, invade us anymore. No industrial country is going to invade any other industrial country anymore. Uh, the military tactics of World War One and Two are no longer uh, uh, effective. We don't need any military spending at all uh, for NATO. Well, these people are not going to get grants and awards from the United States. They're not going to uh, uh, have American uh, book publishers uh, give them enormous uh, uh, million dollar advances to write books explaining why uh, Europe should follow uh, US policy. So uh, Europe really uh, doesn't exist as an independent industry. Uh, it's a satellite of the United States because the United States has, bought, has decided who the European uh, political leaders are going to be, especially uh, in uh, Brussels, the European uh, Parliament, uh, which is just a sort of a total mess. And you can think of the European political system as really being an extension of NATO the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, which is no longer a defense organization because there's nothing to defend. You don't defend yourself against an enemy that doesn't exist. You defend yourself against uh, American military industrial producers going broke because nobody's buying their arms anymore. That's what they're defending against. The Cold War may have ended in 1990, 1991, but the arms industry didn't end because that's where so much money is made. And it was pointed out at the time, I think George Kennan, an American policy analyst, said, as long as you have the military industrial complex making so much money, you're going to have them find an enemy somewhere. They need at least the illusion of having an enemy so that people will keep buying these overpriced uh, F-35 uh, bombers that don't really fly very well. So uh, we're in a kind of uh, just pretend world uh, when it comes to politics. And uh, Europe is pretending 
uh, to have its own politicians making policy, but they're really American appointees. They've already been attacked and have been conquered. Uh, Australia's uh, run pretty much by uh, London banks that are run by uh, the New York banks. So Australia's already uh, been very uh, financialized. If you look at real estate prices in Australia and uh, New Zealand, you realize that whatever income wages rise for Australian or New Zealand workers has to be paid in higher housing costs. And the housing costs are kept high by not taxing land, but untaxing real estate, untaxing land, and uh, letting all of the increasing rent and price of houses being paid to the banks is mortgage interest. So the Australian and New Zealand economies are run to benefit the banks in Australia and uh, England and America, not to uh, benefit uh, uh, the people at large. And so they're really um, real estate uh, uh, promotion uh, projects, uh, not uh, industrialized uh, countries. Uh, they're suffering, but uh, the trick is once they're getting impoverished by the high housing prices, how do you make them feel that they're getting rich? The government, uh, the lobbyists and the economists say, well, look at how rich you're getting. Look at how much more your houses are worth now. I mean, a million dollars instead of just a hundred thousand dollars. Well, uh, the fact is, are they really getting richer when uh, they have to pay a million dollars for a house instead of a hundred thousand dollars? All that means is that all of this increased housing price is uh, mortgage debt. So the price has gone up by running into debt and debt leveraging. And so the idea is uh, you Australians and uh, New Zealanders are getting richer and richer, higher and higher GDP by running into debt. So it must be that running into debt because it increases GDP and the cost of uh, paying rent or the rental value of the housing that you own, uh, you're actually getting richer instead of the reality is you're getting further and further into debt and you're really in trouble because the mortgage interest that you pay on your house of rising price leaves much less and less to spend on actual goods and services. When Australia appointed, uh, elected a socialist prime minister, uh, the Queen's lawyer said, wait, uh, the Queen gets to approve uh, whoever you elect. You're not a democracy and uh, uh, nullified the election. I talked about American meddling, American British meddling. They want to make sure Australia does not have uh, any official elected that would uh, change its uh, loyalty to NATO and its uh, support of uh, neoliberal policies. Canada uh, has gotten worse and worse as a, uh, as a, a public economy. I was the financial advisor uh, to the Canadian government in the late 1970s. Uh, and uh, at that time, uh, the uh, government was trying to prevent the uh, the neo the uh, liberal party from uh, turning the country over to the banks. Uh, Canada uh, 50 years ago, uh, 60 years ago, had a uh, the Bank of Canada that actually was creating its own uh, its its own money. It didn't have to borrow for money. And uh, in the late 70s, uh, the local provinces uh, had to begin uh, need needed money. And the question was, it, Canada had a problem in the 70s that is very much like what China has today. Uh, the government was creating money uh, to finance its own national spending, but the problem was provincial spending. The government was not going to create money uh, and turn it over to the provinces to spending. So what were they going to do? Uh, the, uh, they had a choice. Either they could borrow in Canadian dollars or the banks could go to them and say, why don't you, uh, if you borrow in Canada, you're going to have to pay 5% a year. But if you borrow in Swiss francs or German marks, you're only going to have to pay 2% a year. We can save you money if you borrow in, in uh, German marks or Swiss francs. And so uh, the provinces begin to borrow uh, in a foreign currency. And so the government... Uh, uh, think tank hired me to write a report, Canada and the New International Monetary Order, to say this is going to be a disaster because uh, the uh, Canadian dollar uh, was at that point selling at uh, a, a U.S. dollar eight. And I said, uh, the, uh, the, uh, when the Canadian dollar goes down, first of all, if uh, you borrow from uh, uh, from Germany or uh, Switzerland or any foreign country, uh, they're going to uh, send uh, 
francs and Mar German marks to the central bank, the treasury is going to uh, take these uh, foreign currencies, hold it in the foreign reserves, and they're going to create uh, domestic uh, Canadian dollars to lend out to uh, Alberta and Manitoba and the various provinces there. Now, the question is, why can't the central bank, as long as it's going to be creating these dollars anyway, what does it need uh, German marks and uh, Swiss francs for? It doesn't need it at all. Uh, it, uh, th this is completely unnecessary. And uh, the, ba uh, the banks uh, tried to stop uh, my report from being published. They failed. There was a big discussion. And they said, well, the banks are honest brokers. We, uh, the government is socialist and socialists uh, are stupid. Uh, banks are smart. Uh, and of course, the reality is the re reverse. Uh, bankers are not smart. They're just greedy so that uh, the provinces continued to borrow. Well, within two years, the Canadian dollar had plunged from a dollar eight U.S. dollar eight to 80 cents. The German mark and the uh, uh, Swiss franc soared in foreign exchange rate against the dollar, uh, the Canadian dollar, and the Canadian provinces were broke. The banks had given them bad advice, and they brought they actually brought in Catholic priests that uh, said, "Mr. Hudson, uh, Dr. Hudson, you're uh, you're uh, promoting the, the road to hell uh, because uh, if it's the road to fa the gas chambers, if you have the government creating money, that's government power, and uh, governments are evil. Governments are the devil." And uh, I couldn't believe it. This was what a Canadian. Catholic said, but the banks were so desperate. There was a, a whole group that was spent their whole time just attacking my ideas that Canada should be in charge of its own money creation and keep money as a public utility, but which the Bank of Canada had been doing uh, a century ago. But uh, now it's all changed. Now it's been neoliberalized. Canada is one of the most neoliberalized, uh, corrupt, bank-ridden uh, countries uh, 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 in the world. It has a simply awful prime minister, almost as bad as his father, and uh, it's it's dismantling all of its uh, public uh, welfare uh, as uh, fast as possible. And yes, indeed, it did have a good public health system uh, that was a model some years ago, especially for uh, pharmaceutical prices. Uh, the Canadian government will uh, bargain with companies to pay much, uh, uh, to uh, obtain drugs, pharmaceutical pharmaceuticals at much lower prices than the same things are sold for in the United States. But apart from that, the public health system has been squeezed and dismantled by, by Canada becoming one of the most right-wing uh, countries in the world, as uh, you can see with its foreign secretary being a uh, neo-Nazi. Her father was one of the Nazis in uh, Ukraine, and uh, she's applauded and uh, mobilized uh, support for uh, the Nazis in Ukraine to such a point that uh, now she's being talked, uh, Canada's foreign minister is being talked about to be the next head of NATO uh, as NATO itself becomes a Nazi power and has embraced the Nazi uh, philosophy of uh, race hatred uh, towards uh, the Russians, towards the Chinese. Uh, and uh, the race hatred is certainly uh, vicious in Canada, most of all against the native uh, Indian population there. Uh, but it's uh, also uh, against the Chinese. The English hate the French. The French Hey, it's uh, it, uh, do not uh, idealize Canada. It's uh, it's uh, a hopeless mess.